talk about yesterday's board meeting. Good morning, Brad. Good morning. How are you, Paul? Doing well. How are you? We're well. We're very well. Thank you. Yeah, we have that time of month again, I guess, where we got to kind of sit down and talk about what happened yesterday at the board meeting. Yes. Uh, everybody yes. will notice I have a pretty good little crew with us today. You do. Um, so we'll, we'll get to them here in just a minute and give you guys a chance to get to meet them and, and for them to talk about some of their programs. Um, first, we always kind of go through the financials. Uh, overall, um, April was a very solid month. Um, good month from our operation revenue. Uh, so we had a net revenue with operations, which is again, that's all the business we do inside the four walls of the buildings. Um, and that's kind of our goal every month. We, we talk about, we want to make sure that we're able to be self-sustaining. And so that positive, positive uh, operating income was really due to increases in our inpatient revenue. Um, inpatient and outpatient ancillary services were exceeding budget. And really just a big thank you to the staff you know, it takes staff making sure that they're being uh, good stewards of the money, uh, making sure that they're ordering items when they're necessary, not when they necessarily always want them, uh, making sure that, you know, containing costs and overtime and those kinds of things. And the staff at Woodlawn is, is in my opinion, second to none. They do a great job. So um, because of that, we had, a, we had a good month in April. So that was very positive. And then one of the things we do every year around the same time is we bring in an outside auditing company to do our overall financial audit and so this is what makes sure that everything we're doing is up to the highest standards of uh, governmental accounting guidelines and so we brought in a, a company a blue and company and uh, they did our annual audit and what they noted were um, some wonderful things significant improvement in overall trends from the year before um, we we had a large turnaround from uh, the losses we had in 2022 to 2023 so everything is moving in the right direction from a statistics standpoint and that's important because as an independently owned hospital you know our goal and, and the board's goal is to maintain woodlawn's independence so that we can continue to care for the community in the way the community needs us yes and by being independent and being locally owned and operated that allows us to do that oh yeah that allows us to take into consideration information brought to us by the community on services that are needed and things like that. And so we can, I could say zig and zag, uh, but we could zig and zag a little faster than the larger, larger companies or even small hospitals that are owned by large parent companies that are oftentimes out of town and, and sometimes out of touch with what's going on in the local community. So we're yeah. proud of that. And, and the financial change that we've done in the last year um, sets us up to continue to be able to do that for a long time. So yeah. very, very yeah. good overall. So that audit came back with uh, wonderful findings, um, no issues whatsoever, and so a nice, good, clean bill of health, so to speak. Yeah. So I'm very happy about that. And then some other things just to kind of note. Um, a reminder to everyone, it's Stroke Awareness Month. Yes. So, you know, those signs and symptoms of stroke are important, and, and you know, you can get online and, and look up information and data or, or get on our website, and there's information there. But uh, Stroke Awareness Month is now. So be aware of that, and, and as you're looking at your loved ones and family members, uh, you know, notice those things such as slurred speech and, and weakness on one side of the body, facial drooping, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, and realize that those could be signs of a stroke. Yes. So we want to take care of people as best we can. Um, emergency department changes. We've had three kind of big changes in the last couple months. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, we partnered with a new physician group called Concord Medical. Um, Community members will notice that we brought in several new physicians, um, and they're also gonna notice a couple other things. First is, we have a triage room now that is on the outside of the emergency department. When you first walk in those emergency doors there, um, that will allow an RN to see you right away. Okay. Triage room means they're gonna see you, they're gonna determine if uh, how severe your needs are, whether or not you need to be rushed directly into the back or chest care or, or stroke care, those kinds of things necessarily, or if it's something that, you know, let's go ahead and get some orders put in and get, you know, an x-ray, maybe you're, you're afraid, maybe you broke your arm or broke, broke your fingers or something like that and you need to get checked, but, but priority wise, kind of here's where you're at. And then also there are times when people go to the emergency room and they don't need the emergency room. They really need a follow up with a primary care doctor. Things such as strep throat, ear infection, those kinds of things are oftentimes urgent situations, but they're not true emergencies. And so 
by having a triage room and having an RN lay hands and, and get vitals on someone, we can help that patient make those decisions on what makes the most sense. And there's a reason for that too for the patient. If you go into an emergency room and it's for a, a condition like an ear infection, there could be an instance where your insurance company denies that okay. because it's not a true emergency. And so that means depending on everyone's individual insurance situation, they could be billed for that cost. Mm. Well, that cost obviously is significantly more than your physician's office visit. Oh, yeah. And so part of that is to help people know which direction to go in certain situations. Now, you always have the right and the decision to, to make if you'd like to be seen by the ER doctor. We want to make sure everybody understands that. Yes. Um, but, but it is a way to help us mm. kind of move people through. And then the mm. last part of that is, is that by having an RN see someone on the outside, it reduces the time spent on the inside. Because mm -hmm. that nurse can go ahead and put in what are called nurse-driven protocols that the physicians have already pre-approved to go ahead and get things like lab work done, the x-ray done, a CAT scan done, um, an ultrasound done, whatever those testings are that need to be done, they can go ahead and be ordered and oftentimes completed and the results back by the time the physician moves through the rooms. And so when they come in to see you, they already have information which okay. speeds up the entire process. So we've already seen a, a, a faster turnaround time in the last couple months um, because of those nurse-driven protocols. So those are just three new things that we're doing in the emergency room to and, help you. And uh, you mentioned RN, that's just a registered nurse. Registered correct? nurse, absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll make sure that I try to keep my acronyms to <laughs> No, we, we you talk said about it the that first time, the time when I saw the hand go up. I'm like, God, oh, yeah. better. Uh, we we better talk about that all that. the time. But yes, a registered <laughs> nurse will see you on the outside and, and get that process started, make things a little smoother. Okay. Um, and then we do have a couple new providers coming in. Um, one just started last week. We have a physician assistant named Kelly Ors who uh, joined us at Schaefer Medical Center. So if you see a new face over there, Dr. Benefit's uh, office there, welcome her. She's new to the family. And then um, next week we have uh, an OBGYN come in, oh. so obstetrics and gynecology. Um, Dr. Laurel Wal Walton will be here on June the 3rd, and um, so you'll be able to get in and get her, get seen by her. She'll be there at Woodlawn Medical Professionals on the second floor of the professional building there attached to the hospital. And so uh, you can call and get scheduled there. And, and part of the reason I bring up the OBGYN is we want to make sure that everybody in the community understands that our OB service and our OB floor is open for business. Mm -hmm. um, our board made it very um, apparent yesterday and very clear. Woodlawn Hospital has, and Woodlawn Health has no plans for changing or closing our OB services. In fact, if you look at what we've done over the last year, we've enhanced them and increased them. We now have um, four, now five providers who can do um, deliveries there at Woodlawn Hospital. So we have uh, providers at, at Argus, we have providers here in town that can do those services. So we're growing, if anything. So let us know, we're open, we're here to take care of you. Okay. Uh, we have a new podiatrist starting. We haven't had a podiatrist at Woodlawn in about a decade. Mm -hmm. And so we're bringing in Dr. Eric Renlisbacher. He'll be, getting, uh, be starting on June 10th. Um, you can go ahead and call Schaefer Medical Center and and get scheduled for visits. Um, they'll be giving him a few days to get used to the computers, of course, <laughs> and then he'll be open for service. So um, let them know and then they'll get you taken care of. And then also over in Akron, um, you know, we have Maureen Neely who's been with Woodlawn Health for 22 plus years, I believe it is, 23 mm -hmm. years. She's gonna be retiring um, in July. And so we brought in a new uh, nurse practitioner who is going to be working over at the Akron Medical Center and. and and step in and help take care of that community. Uh, Carrie Pulley is her name. Carrie's a, a born and bred, I don't know if you call them Akronians, but she's a born and bred Akron resident. Uh, family was from there and, and she left and, and moved away for, for many years and she's back. And so uh, we're, we're welcoming her back into the community and, and welcoming her into the Woodlawn family. So we're excited about that. And then to my right, we have a couple People that, you know, they kind of take your breath away. And I say that as a dad joke because they're both respiratory therapy backgrounds. So, Melinda, please go ahead and introduce yourselves and, and what you're going to speak about today. 
Well, my name is Melinda, and I'm honored to uh, be part of Woodlawn, and um, we're committed to um, just helping people in our community and to earn that right to care for them. And um, we have a lot of respiratory therapists, of course, that's one of our main things. And so um, when you come in, they might be giving you different breathing treatments, and we just, we have a great team. And so we're honored to be there, and we're working a lot on um, education and just how we can help you um, and educate you on different diseases and then um, I also am over the sleep lab and EEG and we see patients three and up and so different sleep issues that people are having and then um, neurology so EEG is basically brain waves and so that's neurology and different people who have seizures or um, you know sometimes that, that testing really ranges and so we're just we're glad that we're there and able to take care of you and then another thing that we do um, respiratory wise is pulmonary function tests so that's just basically basically different lung testing that the doctors order. And then a new program that we're um, getting ready to kick off here is um, smoking sensation. And so um, we've been through a lot of different training and we had a couple therapists go, go through training and just are excited to get started and just to help people who are wanting to quit smoking. So this is Taylor and she's gonna tell you a little bit more about it. She's one of our therapists. Hi. I'm Taylor, like Melinda said. I have a respiratory background. I've been an RT, respiratory therapist, for four years. Um, Melinda came to us with this idea and I jumped on the ball because I love to do education. So this is a Quit Smart program, which is brought to us by a Dr. Robert Shipley. It was an online course that I got to do that I got to learn about how all of these test patients went through this course, used all the materials that we now have and how they are now tobacco free in their lives and doing very well. Um, so this class will be five classes long, five weeks long. We have the opportunity to have a morning class and an evening class that fits anyone's kind of work schedule. That's what we were trying to do. This class is also non-billable for us. So it's something free that we are doing to give back to our community. Okay. Which I think is very awesome for a small community like this. Absolutely. Um, we aren't going to be starting until the end of June. We have two classes kind of set up right now. We're going to do our first starting class and then we'll take like a two week break and then we'll go right into our second class. Um, there's a couple of different ways to get signed up. We do have little business cards coming that have not come in yet, I do not believe. Um, but they're going to be handed out at doctor's offices so you can be an outpatient and get information or the patient's inpatient can get information from us. All you're gonna have to do is call our phone number, which is 574-224-1600. Leave a message at the RT department, tell us your name, your phone number, and we'll call you back when we can because we're not always sitting by our phone to answer the phone call. Right. Great. Okay. We're very excited for it. Absolutely. And, and I know this is something that's been asked about in the community and uh, for four or five years at least. Um, so that's great that we're able to get up and running. Thank you, Taylor. You're Very much appreciate it. And I often volunteer for sleep tests. No, I'm um, not sure you do. But they won't always let me do those. <laughs> the problem, they keep saying, you should, you're should. you volunteering in the middle of the day, Brad. <laughs> and I just want to make sure their equipment's good. Yeah, you know? I, I think we know another guy who might uh, volunteer, volunteer for one of those. I'm here if they need it tested. <laughs> Um, one of the other exciting things that uh, came out of our meeting and has been something we've talked about probably for six months, our computer system. Yes. So it is, I will say it's done, and what I mean by that is we have signed into an agreement with Epic um, to uh, join that platform, and uh, that's going to be a 12-month process. Okay. Our kickoff is next week. And our plan is to be up and live on the Epic software by June, middle of June in 2025. It is a full one year, um, I would say, it's, it's a sprint marathon. Ah, <laughs> um, yeah. Because it's lots and lots of periods of time where you're really, really, really going fast and then it just takes a whole year. Mm -hmm. And so it is a sprint marathon and, and we are really excited Again, what that'll do for the community members, it'll put them on a platform that is one of the most widely used platforms in the country, if not the world. Um, that platform has the ability for you to have a seamless medical record 
across the inpatient and outpatient services. And then any of those facilities that utilize EPIC, for example, the Cleveland Clinic, if you take a family member or you go there and see a specialist and you come back and see your primary care doctor here in town, all you have to do is say, hey, I went to Cleveland Clinic last week. That physician can request that record and have it input directly into your chart here. That's awesome. So it's instant access to that. And then you as a patient will be on a, a new um, portal. So, you know, your portal is your app that you can get on for healthcare facilities and, yeah. and see all your information. Well, that portal is called MyChart in the Epic software. And so that, that portal will allow you to see all of the places you've gone and pull up all of your own information. Okay. Um, you'll be able to, to eventually schedule visits from that. Um, you'll be able to, if you choose to, pay your co-pays from that. So um, this is a huge leap forward for, for Woodlawn Health and, and for the community. Um, so over this next year, if you see us kind of a little bit uh, sleepier than normal or uh, <laughs> a little more uh, anxious than normal, it's there's a lot of work to do and the team's going to be very very busy in this next year but it's going to be a wonderful product once we get through that end of that uh, door there at the light at the end of the tunnel so to speak so awesome. very very exciting very exciting um other things to talk about hey don't forget next next june or next week june 6th woodlawn foundation golf outing yes if you if you aren't already on a team or you haven't already signed up you know get online um, through our website woodlawnhealth.org and uh, click on the links and, and get it checked out. Call the golf uh, course over there and, and get checked out and see if you can get on a team. Um, we'd love to have you come out and, and truthfully, there's an ample chance to make fun of a few of us um, <laughs> who don't golf as much as some of the others. Um, but we'll look like golfers. We'll have okay. the golf shorts that look like that and the bright, bright colors and all that stuff. Yeah, so we'll the, look good. The long socks we'll, on. Absolutely, we're gonna look good at it. Um, I'll be over near the water looking for my ball yes. as you guys drive by. Um, and then, again, just want to make sure everybody understands that, you know, we are so proud of Woodlawn in the last couple of years. Um, you know, going through the pandemic and getting out that other side of it, um, that, was a, that was a struggle for, for us as well as every hospital across the country. And we're at that point now where we're starting to see some of that growth that we had always been planning on, you know. COVID stopped most hospitals in their tracks as far as starting new programs and, and doing new things because our goal was to make sure that we were financially able to keep the doors open and take care of the, the problems that we were encountering, encountering day to day. Yes. So we're excited to be able to add new services and new things and, and uh, with podiatry and smoking cessation and uh, uh, bringing in a, a new OBGYN and um, changing to a new EHR. Those are, those are wonderful things that we're excited about. So we want to thank you guys for supporting us because Absolutely. you know we're open here to serve you, but uh, um, we want to be able to have you come in and, and take care of your, your needs and your family's needs. And, and that helps us make, remain independent and, and viable. So Absolutely. we appreciate you. Um, and then, you know, don't forget, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, woodlawnhealth.org, and, and, uh, or if you see us in the streets. Say hello. Yes, um, Brad. We, we love to hear when that. You uh, come running up to him and say, "Hey, I know you." Well, I don't know the running part, but I feel like <laughs> running. running's a little aggressive, Paul. Okay. But okay. what we do enjoy meeting and talking to people, and and we're going to be out there coming up these next couple months. Uh, you'll see us at uh, every fair and festival and and activity in, in two or three counties. So uh, we look forward to talking to you and seeing you guys out at those locations as well. So thank you very much. All we right. appreciate you. Yes, well, thank you, Brad, so much. Uh, thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Taylor. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys next month. We'll see you in June. Yes. All right. Good luck at the golf outing. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome.